Hello, welcome to another episode of Design Theater. My name is Wes. Today we're going to be looking at the painter Frank Frazetta. Frank Frazetta was a painter in the 60s and 70s and I believe in the 80s. He had a long career. I believe he did some comic work at one point. Huge inspiration to me personally, but to a whole generation of artists. His work is, uh, it is high fantasy, low fantasy at the same time. The work that he did for the Conan book series is what made Conan so iconic to begin with. And so I want to go over some of the reasons like why is his work so iconic? Why does it work the way that it does? And we just want to, we're just going to take and take a look at some of these paintings and, and see what we can learn, see what we can see in them. So this first piece here is clearly a Conan piece. What I think, what I think that a, a lot of people get caught up on whenever we are looking at or studying an artist is, is that we, we look at the rendering or we look at the anatomy and, and the mastery that these guys have over it and we get very caught up in like the technical abilities of things. But I think what it is that's worth, that's really worth honing in on is why it is that you find this piece to be so amazing. You can go and you can find a highly rendered image online from any number of artists very easily right like in, and now especially with ai generators you can you can just generate images uh, at the click of a button really that look better than this and can be done faster than this right now the thing is though is that just because it's rendered at a high level doesn't mean that that's the reason why you care about it right if we look at this stuff from just a consumer's point of view instead of an artist's point of view it becomes obvious that the reason why people love his stuff is because he's a great storyteller. That's really what he's doing in these pieces. You know, his he has incredible technical ability and his ability to use color and and lighting and uh, the his understanding of anatomy. It's great. It's great work. But the thing is is that he Everything is in service to the story. What is the story that he's trying to tell? And he wants to tell that story in the most dramatic way possible, and he wants to get it across quickly. So how does he do that? What kind of choices is he making? Ultimately, what separates really great artists from artists that haven't realized their potential is really the creative decisions that they're making in their work and the only way to really under to the only way to improve that is to really understand it whenever you see it in other people's work and then to share it with other people so what I think is interesting about this piece is we have like this chain of events that are about to happen in this piece right and we could say that these chain of events, they actually lead us through the painting. They lead our eye through the painting, right? When we have a composition, we want it to be instantly recognizable. We want it to be instantly readable. And we want it to be uh, something that you don't have to explain to somebody. Like the story is there and we want it to be dramatic and captivating. So what you see in a lot of Frank Frazetta's work is is that he stages the moment of his painting scene to be right before something is about to happen or right after something is going to happen. This isn't this isn't a coincidence. This is the most dramatic moment in in any film or illustration or anything. This is the most dramatic moment because it allows the viewer to then project themselves onto the canvas and to think from the character's point of view, which is what it is that makes something dramatic. What makes something dramatic is not how well rendered it is, but how much of it can I put of myself and my own thinking and my own imagination 
onto the piece. And when you tell a story like this, like what it is that we see here on the screen, it, uh, it really captivates people's imagination. That's what it is that people mean when it says that Frank Frazetta's work captures your imagination. He's involving you in the painting by telling you this story. So what is the story that he's, that he's telling, right? Well, he's telling you the story of this character that's, that's standing. We, we, so we have one character at the top who his silhouette, we can see from a distance, even if we make this a very small image, we can see the silhouette on top, right, of this figure. So it's a very strong, triangular-like composition, which a lot of Frank Frazetta's compositions are triangular, right? So you can see, you can see this kind of triangle kind of form in here, right? Something like that. Forgive me, I know that's not a great triangle. Um, so we see this triangular form that's that is creating the structure for the whole painting, right? And then we zoom in and we see that there's this chain reaction of events that are that is about to take place. And he's literally getting the... He's literally like taking a... He's almost going into this world and taking a photo of something a split second before something happens, right? So we see this, we see this figure here We see these figures here. We see this guy up front, and he's he's got his eyes on this guy that's coming at him. But we're only like one second away from this guy grabbing this hair because the hair is in his hand. He's ready to grab this hair, jerk it back, and stab him in the stab him in the throat or something, right? Like this this right here is so brutal. And then we look over here to the woman and we're getting we're getting this reaction shot of her seeing this and her uh, you know terrified her terrified look on her face and we we see this interplay between these two there's this two contrasting facial expressions that are telling us two different stories one story is telling us this guy he's ready for this guy that's climbing up he's ready to he's ready to kill him uh, he's he's got the upper hand in this situation, right? Or so he thinks. Because then we have this other story element of her face looking over at this guy. And because as the viewer, we see both of them, we see the reaction from this guy, and we see the reaction from this woman, there's this dynamic, there's this psychological dynamic to the illustration because you're now putting yourself in this position of this guy and you're thinking oh you know you you um you know you better watch out this guy's about to this guy's about to stab you right so you're getting another layer to this story but then there's another layer on top of that which is this guy who's standing over this ape like guy this ape monster and he's got his axe, and he's ready to bring it down on this guy, right? So this is this is the sort of storytelling of what it is that that makes Rosetta's work so good. And so we'll go through some of these other pieces and and see what other kind of stories we can see in them. Um, I mean, Frank Rosetta's he he's so good at being able to tell a story. Really, just with a single character and with the lighting. I mean, the lighting says everything. You know, we see, we get this sense that this character is some sort of a wizard or a witch or something along those lines. And uh, the the feel that his work creates is just is just awesome. You know, we have. I guess this would actually be a scene of something that's happening in the something that's happening in the midst or something that just happened. Right? They're reacting to this thing that is that just happened. 
Again, another example. This is one of my favorite pieces of his. I used to draw this piece whenever I first started trying to learn how to draw. I used to draw this piece all the time. He just does such a good job of like creating these these light shapes, right? Because what you want to do is you want to create shapes of light. And then you want to have shapes of shadow. And we notice that these shapes of shadow, they all kind of connect with one another, right? Like you could almost make this one individual shape, these dark shapes, right? So if we zoom out, again, we get this, we get this same thing, right? Like he's, he does a really good job of organizing his values. So he has this light figure in the front and then he has a dark background. So it's almost like we're going from dark to light with these figures and then we're going light to dark in the background. And again, we have another one of these moments. What's about to happen? Conan, he's he's pulling back his axe and he's coming over the top of this guy and he's ready to cut this other guy's head off. And then we see this other additional story of the guy who's falling back with his sword ready to swipe at Conan. And then we see another figure in the foreground who's also ready for Conan. And Conan seems to, he seems to almost be pushing through the first two guys and he's coming for this other guy, this this third guy that's here in the foreground. Yeah, I mean, the, the other thing with his is that he has a lot of dynamicism in his work, right? So by that, I mean, you want like a rhythm. This curve is going like this, right? So it's going like that. This curve is going in, and then we have this curve. All right, so we have this curve going back like that. And then we even have that in the, in the tail. This curve is going up, this curve is going down, All right? So you have this constant kind of motion, this rhythm, this back and forth motion. This rhythm of going down, going up and over, and then down again, that rhythm, you see that in, in the actual piece. This is, this is just another variation of that same rhythm that we're seeing here, right? So it's about getting those curves in and figuring out what is the flow of the piece. And I can make like a longer tutorials explaining all of this concepts if, for whoever's interested. Um, I may end up putting up some some tutorial videos like on Gumroad or something along those lines at some point. So if you're interested in seeing something like that, make sure to like and subscribe. Let's go through these last couple ones and then I'll let you go. Yeah, it's another another awesome piece, you know, right as something is about to happen. Again, it's like he he gets it to where he's rep he's representing that spatially in the painting, like literally this this sword is about to go through his neck. Right, it's just a moment away from it, and the amount of tension it is that that creates, and the amount of drama that creates is is great because we don't know what's going to happen. You know, I mean, he might stab him, but that guy, it might not stop this monster, you know. And so that gets your imagination involved. Yeah, he's a master at rhythm. He's a master at being able to create something that just has this sense of flow through it. This is an awesome piece. I think Joe Rogan has this in his studio, this Conan piece. Really cool. Again, another one of these pieces where you can you can zoom out. 
and you can still make out that there's this big shape of of color right so a lot of that comes down to these big shapes of color and of uh, value that are identifiable from a distance we want these shapes to be identifiable from a distance let's just go through a couple more yep awesome this is a great one another great one. Oh yeah this is this is the one to end it on look at that you know you can you can even see that he he doesn't just illustrate these these big events you know he can illustrate these more quiet moments too you know because what is it that's about to happen here well I don't, I don't really think that that would be what to, what to get out of this piece. You know, this is like a moment piece. This is like her resting up against this pillar. And yeah. So anyway, if you like these, please like, subscribe. Uh, let me know some artists it is that you would like for me to cover in the comments. And um, I will see you guys next time. Thank you.